with our girl tech news i am here with ashley and ben oh my goodness you guys are doing some cool stuff Thank tell you. us tell us what you're up to with ventana um so we live stream holograms allowing artists to play multiple venues at the same time so we created our own technology that's scalable that lets us live stream artists anywhere in the world similar to the way they did the tupac hologram at coachella in 2012. Mm. wow and so something you came up with on your own, something you've seen and wanted to take to the next level. How's that evolved? It was accidentally. <laughs> it was not the, we didn't like wake up and be like, we're gonna make holograms one morning. Yeah. What? Yeah, it really started, um, I go to Coachella every year on my birthday, mm -hmm. it's always on my birthday, and it started getting more expensive and sold out, so one year only half my friends could make it. And the half that couldn't go watched the live stream on their laptop all weekend. And I was like, that sounds miserable. Why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like, what if I could live stream high quality audio from Coachella to a warehouse in LA, recreate the same light show with DMX MIDI controls, would you ch pay a cheaper ticket to go? And they all were like, yes, that sounds awesome. Totally do that. So I started just having friends DJ in my apartment and we live streamed it to a nightclub down the street to figure out how to do high quality almost lossless sound and uh, mess with some light controls and then started pitching to artists uh, management and, and agents and we had a, a few say yes this is this sounds great we'll split the net with you you can play to fans you're not reaching and make more money um, but then it was really after we got all these nightclubs in uh, Asia to sign up, because that was a secondary market they weren't reaching now, 
um, that's when the artist started pushing back and saying, you know, we want it to be more authentic and more real than just audio and a light show. Uh, so we just started pitching holograms. We had never done one. Um, <laughs> but we had Kia and Nikki Romero say yes. So we had about a month to figure that out. Okay. And we actually used a competitor system for the first show. Um, we pulled it off. It looked great. Uh, but it was a nightmare to set up. It took 13 hours and 10 people to get this put together. We had to film him the day before, edit it all night to get it ready. Um, so while we pulled it off, we were like, this isn't scalable. We can't ship this to nightclubs in Asia and have this work. So it was at that point, which was June of last year, um, June 18th was that event, uh, we started creating our own hardware system. Mm. So our goal was really to make this like Ikea. So uh, two unskilled people can set this up in about an hour, our tension system and screen. And then um, we hacked the Xbox Connect and wrote software that lets us film a person in any environment and get their image for a hologram live. Wow. And how, how are these bigger manufacturers working with you? Are they excited that you're coming into this space and developing these, sounds like, turnkey Probably. I mean, solutions? it depends on who you're talking to. Yeah. Our competitors are probably not very excited that this is happening, <laughs> but... Basically, what we're able to do with our system, because it's so much scalable, much more scalable, transportable, uh, and smaller, that we're able to put it in venues that it's never been a possibility before. So really what we've done in terms of the holographic space is finally made the economics of it work. So instead of like everyone being like, wow, Tupac was amazing at Coachella, and then everyone's like, what else are you doing? There's Michael Jackson the Billboard Awards. is like the next big thing that you saw. But two huge events, one-off things, it doesn't really work. So what we've made is so holographic performances can be an everyday thing. Holographic brand displays can happen. You could have Blake Griffin on the concourse of Subway or of the concourse of the Staples Center selling Subway sandwiches as a hologram as you walk by. Wow! So uh, that's kind of our big differentiator. So in your reel, I noticed that you guys had some commercial brands already. How are they embracing this technology? I mean, they see it as something that's totally different. You get to leverage endorsement deals like you could never leverage them before. Like take Will I Am and Intel for example. He's probably going to play one or two shows with them, and he's and apparently he's writing a few songs for them. But like that's going to be it. If they could take Will I Am on the road and put him in a hundred different Best Buys or something like that, wow. all of a sudden they get so much more bang for their buck with their endorsement deals. So brands are really excited about the interactivity, about being able to use celebrities that have embraced the brand via hologram technology, about doing awesome logo displays. There's lots of cool things that can happen. And another piece of that, with the software we wrote with the Connect, we can actually insert customers into the advertisement. So if we have Blake Griffin as a hologram eating a Subway sandwich, someone can walk up in front of our camera and then their hologram is next to him. And then they can take iPhone uh, pictures, videos, or any smartphone wow. and post that to social media. So then brands are getting all of the impressions and potentially viral campaign. Okay, and so then how, how does this whole thing work with trying to get your business model received by people? Do they understand it, first of all? Oftentimes, no, not at first. <laughs> no. Um, but it's been, it's been going well. I mean, the bigger picture makes a lot of sense because it allows artists to play more venues. It allows fans to see artists that wouldn't otherwise be able to see them. And it also allows um, venues to be able to get talent they could never get. Okay. So that part of it makes a lot of sense to people, but sometimes when you bring investors by and you're trying to explain how a hologram works. And how the music industry and works. And how the music industry works. <laughs> right. It can get a little confusing. Yeah, but um, one of the things we've done to help with that is partner with Paradigm Talent Agency. They're a global talent agency. They own AM Only, which has a lot of the major DJs, including Tiesto. Um, so that partnership has been very helpful in getting artists signed on to do this. Um, and then we've really just been doing demos. We did a hologram concert at Paul Oakenfold down in San Diego, which went really well. Everyone partied to it like it was a regular DJ, you know, glow sticks, going crazy. Um, so that video footage has been great to show people an example of, right. you know, what, what this can be. And so then how about the dynamics between the team here? It seems like it's an everyday evolving Moving yeah. target. Yeah. So yeah, we had a, a Korean business partner in this morning. <laughs> yeah, and if you heard noise in the background, Troy, our COO, just walked in. So uh, we're about f six of us now. 
Wow. In total. And that has been just progression. Everyone just, or did everyone just get together one day and say, we're going to do this? Yeah, it was just Ben and I uh, who started in the beginning. Um, Brian is our Korean business partner. Uh, he got his MBA at USC, but is originally from Seoul. Met him through the USC network. Um, Max interned for us for a year while he was a senior. Um, he graduated in May and moved down here to join full time. Uh, Scott uh, has been helping us since the beginning. He does all the uh, editing and film and graphics okay. from the beginning. A um, friend of mine from high school. so he's, He built our first website. Yeah, built our first website, did all our first shoots. Um, so he became full-time you know, almost a year ago now. Um, Troy is our COO, has a lot of production experience. He just joined a few months ago. So it's really just evolved as we've been able to expand and realize what our needs really are. Okay, and funding, is everyone just kind of building and building and building as you go kind of thing? Did you have investors start from the beginning with you? We funded it ourselves in the beginning wow. up until mm. September of last year, and we raised $100,000 from two angels, so still a pretty small amount of money. So we're just raising our, our seed round right now, but we really like that we bootstrapped it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I think you figure out things that you wouldn't otherwise figure out if you were able to throw some cash at them. Yeah. So, I mean, we figured out lighting schemes using lights from Home Depot when we first yeah. started doing this wow. that, that worked. And, you know, yeah. you find ways to save money, you find ways to do things differently. So Definitely a passion project. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so backgrounds, were you both in this space before? Um, no. Um, neither? <laughs> neither. <laughs> so my background's engineering. I got my bachelor's and master's at USC. Uh, worked for Northrop Grumman and then BP for a while, but okay. always loved music and was just, again, I started experimenting on the sides with friends DJing in my apartment and live streaming it to nightclubs down the street. So wow. just, that was what I did for fun on the weekends. <laughs> Very cool. How about you, Ben? Uh, I was business at USC. Ashley and I actually met um, after college. Friends introduced us because I started a company in college importing sunglasses from China with my brother. Wow. And Ashley had an idea about something she wanted to work on, so they put us in touch, and then we kind of kept in touch until this came about. Very cool. Very cool. It's a little entrepreneurial spirit in both of you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And so now, how challenges? What have been some of the biggest challenges that you were like, wow, we did not sign up for this? I think the biggest challenge is that we almost have two customers. So we have, you know, the artists to sign up, and then we also have the venues to sell to. Mm -hmm. um, so that that has presented an interesting challenge in making the timing of that work out. Um, but again, that's kind of the value in this partnership with Paradigm um, to kind of handle the artist side. So it's really figuring out um, what are the best strategic partners to have. Okay. I think the yeah the biggest challenges haven't necessarily come from the technical aspects because we. We always find a way around those. The biggest challenge is always getting people to see the bigger vision mm -hmm. of what it could be and to make artists realize that you're not trying to cannibalize ticket sales and you're not trying to, to take away from their live performance but rather add to it and to make fans realize like, hey, this can be something different. It's a new experience. It's a new way of consuming media because sure. initially everyone's always like, whoa, don't rock the boat, especially yeah. in the music industry. Because it's kind of touchy. Isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, their experience with technology is ruining their record sales. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now, you know, all of their money is now made on live performances, mm -hmm. which is the complete opposite of what it was in the past. Right. So this is really a way to make more money on live performances because there's only 52 weekends in a year. Mm -hmm. You can only, only play so many shows. Mm -hmm. So it's really just conveying that and, and making sure they understand they're getting a fair cut of the deal. Okay. And now, how is this shaping up with the consumer? Is the consumer just as excited to see the holograms? Well, we're, I mean, it's something that's totally different, and we think we can add lots of stuff visually that people might not even be able to see at a live concert in terms of special effects. Uh, one of the reasons that we started doing this in Asia is they're super, they're early adopters of new technology. They're really open to consuming media in new formats, mm -hmm. and also they just don't have access to the headliner talent that we have in the U.S. and Europe. Okay. So over there, it's probably being eaten like up. Really, yeah, yeah, really heartily embraced. And then over mm -hmm. here, uh, I think that we're going to start expanding into like Middle America a lot. A lot of the places that get missed by some of these major tours, they're not like necessarily the biggest metropolises, but this will be a new way for them to be able to kind of experience that. Mm -hmm. 
Great, great. And so do you think you're going to keep it pretty focused for a while until you get more, I guess, hands on deck kind of thing? What do you mean by focused? Focused in specific markets is what I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, um, so we're actually raising our seed round of funding right now. Um, within that, uh, one of the investors is a global production company that we're partnering with us, so that will let us be global. And the plan um, is really to launch at the end of this summer, beginning of fall, with one artist to 50 venues at the same time as a hologram. Wow. Um, and that will really get us to that global level quickly, and then have 50 different uh, projection systems around the world that then we can continue to sell content to. And the venues, do they all have to be like stadium giant or can, can it be as small as even movie theaters? No, it could definitely be as small as movie theaters. Um, though we're really, we would never do this in a movie theater because the entire idea is to do this at like a club venue. A venue with a dance floor and a bar so it's the, the atmosphere and it has the, the concert lighting right. that you would get at a real concert. Um, but we are targeting uh, club type venues. Uh, and hotels, casinos that are 500 to 2,000 people. So you're really just really just carving out a whole new niche of entertainment, in yeah. essence. Mm -hmm. Very cool, very cool. Any suggestion for wanting for people that are wanting to get, especially you know, girls wanting to get into tech? Mm -hmm. How how's it been in the in the tech space for you? Um, I would say having an engineering degree really helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Definitely the, the more you can do in school and then have your professors to lean on, um, help solve problems has been great. Um, and really just start experimenting. I mean, we were building stuff in Ben's parents' garage. <laughs> the whole reason you get into it, just, just go out there and do it. Because the only yeah. way anything ever gets done is when you've told Kia and Nikki Romero that you can make a hologram and then you have to actually do you it. You have to perform. Yeah. yeah. Literally. <laughs> so working in the in the engineering world I mean that's not every girl that's out there decides to do that how did how did you come to that want in your life um, I hated writing <laughs> she does. Um, yeah <laughs> I to hate it um, I, you know as a kid I was taking apart every radio in our house my mom hated it um, wow. but really it was like you should apply to engineering school this is clearly something I think you would like um, and, you know it I think there are starting to be more girls in the field. I think my graduating class was 15 or 20% girls. Um, I think the most frustrating part is, you know, when we go to meetings, they always immediately ask Ben about the technology or look, assume Ben is the engineer. And I mean, we both work on everything together. Yeah. Um, but I think just because traditionally it is the majority uh, male, then they just assume I'm the marketing, mm -hmm. you know, which can be frustrating, but sure. it's something that's changing. And I think every year there's more and more girls in engineering fields. So that will definitely help. And how about the investors? Do they take you seriously? Are they listening when you're explaining to... She gets more investors in here than anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> like that's really getting people into the office. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it was past that just initial assumption everyone you know they treat Ben and I equally where they you know they know we're partners from the beginning mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also the way because we treat each other uh, as very equal partners and I think that shows to other investors or partners you know whoever that that's the way we treat each other so that's the way we get treated I'm Patty Rafa with iGirl Tech News I'm here with Ashley and Ben with Mentana making some really cool cool technology for the entertainment space. Thanks guys. Yeah, thank Thanks. you.